You are looking into the eyes of one of the oldest winged insects on Earth. Those eyes saw dinosaurs appear on this planet, saw the mountains rise, saw the coming of man. Most animals have survived through evolutionary change, but the basic design of the dragonfly has not changed in 300 million years. Where there are marshes, there are dragonflies. Without these wet places, their long flight through history would come to an end. To see a dragonfly is to know that this one place is biologically healthy. Across the earth, there are some 5,000 species of dragonflies and damselflies with such variety of color and markings that they have inspired poets and writers and have become woven into the folklore and mythology of nations. Damselflies belong to the same order as dragonflies, but are generally smaller, more delicate, and less aggressive. 300 years ago, a poet wrote, the dragonfly doth set forth nature's elegancy beyond the expression of art. It was Alfred Lord Tennyson who described the dragonfly as a living flash of light. And that is how we often see them at first, their gossamer wings sparkling in the sun as they patrol their territories a few feet above the water. Their time is the midday heat of summer. Although only a fraction of their lives is spent in flight, they love being out in the open air, in the sunlight which they have been so perfectly designed. Each of the dragonfly's four wings is controlled by its own set of muscles. In mid-flight, it can stop, go backwards, fly vertically, or suddenly dash forward at high speed. Such expertise in the air has convinced some observers that this may be the best flying machine on the planet. It also has a built-in flight stabilizer with the head maintaining a level attitude, hairs on the back of the head act as sensors to monitor the position of wings and body. And the dragonfly makes corrections as it flies. In Japan, the dragonfly is a national emblem, part of history, art, and culture. The beauty of a dragonfly, it is said, endures in the endless eternity and is not like something man-made, which, as it grows larger, shows its flaws. They seem not of this world. Damselflies and dragonflies share the same gift of flight, the same elegance at rest or in motion. With its huge compound eye and swiveling head, the dragonfly may see its world like this, the wide-angle world of an aerial hunter.
If there is an awkward part of the dragonfly's life above the water, it must surely be the time of mating. Such contortions as this are unique among insects. And yet, everything has been worked out according to a plan, which assures fertilization of the female's eggs and the placing of those eggs into the water. The male grips her very firmly by the back of the head, and she must curve her body around until they are connected in a mating circle. Sperm is transferred to the eggs, which are then immediately ready for laying. Both damselflies and dragonflies can take to the air while mating, demonstrating a unique ability to coordinate their wing movements. Although their lives are almost over, their final act must be to reproduce the species, to fertilize the next generation of eggs. For an insect, which normally must be on guard against the threat from birds and even from larger dragonflies, this is a dangerous time. But a far greater threat to their survival comes from the draining of marshes and the loss of the rich, shallow waters where the eggs will be laid and the larva will develop and grow. Eggs have been fertilized, and the female will separate and immediately start to lay her eggs into the water. Each time she touches the surface, she is depositing eggs. The pattern of egg laying varies from one species of dragonfly to another. Some are deposited on plants, or wood, or into the ground, and often in distinct patterns. stays around for the egg laying process, defending the territory or playing an active role. This male dragonfly is actually controlling the egg laying pattern. Still holding the female by the back of her head, he moves her along at regular intervals as she deposits her eggs. When the air is full of flashing silver wings, other small insects are in danger. The dragonfly hunts on the wing, catching flying insects in legs that are held in front like a basket. It can pick flies and mosquitoes right off your head. They are voracious predators, and from time to time will catch and eat others of their own kind. With their huge eyes and biting jaws, no doubt to smaller insects they are indeed flying dragons. And yet to man, they are benign and gentle insects which neither sting nor bite.
we certainly have reason to be grateful to them, for among their favorite foods are mosquitoes. In its lifetime, above and below water, a single dragonfly may consume thousands of mosquitoes in the adult and larval form. Other prey include deer flies, moths, and butterflies. In turn, the dragonfly itself may be eaten by fly-catching birds, such as purple martens, and even by kingfishers. But the dragonfly's time of grace and beauty in the air is short, a matter of weeks, and only a fraction of its total lifespan. This is how a dragonfly spends most of its life, as a stalking predator below the surface of the marsh. There is no grace and little beauty here. Just a deadly, efficient hunter with those same large eyes and the ability to strike with lightning speed. The larva has a hinged, extendable lower lip equipped with sharp claws that can be shot out to grab and hold its prey. to meet on a dark night. Most of the dragonfly's lifespan of two or three years is spent down here in the nymph or larval stage. It breathes by drawing water into its body and extracting the oxygen and can move swiftly when it has to by jet propulsion. There are many more nymphs than there are adult dragonflies. And the nymph itself is an important food for other creatures, such as larger fishes and diving ducks. When the nymph is ready to molt its skin for the last time and become a creature of the air, it leaves the water, usually early in the morning before predators such as birds are awake. Dragonflies are arthropods. They have external skeletons which must be split open and molted at each stage of growth. This is the final critical molt with the nymph now helpless and vulnerable. The delicate wings are folded inside their protective covers. From that plain package will come wings designed 300 million years ago. It may seem primitive, but this slow splitting away of the old external skeleton is an ancient, reliable process, tested through more centuries than we are capable of imagining.
transformation from nymph to shiny new adult dragonfly will turn this plain animal of the mud into a dancing damsel of the air. These are perhaps the finest eyes in the insect world. They cover most of the head, which itself can turn and swivel to give the dragonfly 180 degrees of vision from side to side, 70 degrees up and 40 degrees down. Equally important for survival are the wings, still held within their protective covers, while the rest of the dragonfly emerges. Finally, four precious wings begin to unfold. Their strength in the air will come from those veins, which give them flexibility and elasticity. Now the dragonfly must wait for the wings to harden. Even then it may be several days before it is strong enough to withstand airborne territorial clashes with mature dragonflies. And while it waits here, exposed in the sunlight, it has no escape from insect-eating birds. Unlike other insects, such as moths and butterflies, that also undergo transformation from larva to adult, dragonflies have no dormant stage, no chrysalis. The nymph had to leave the water at exactly the right moment, switching from a water-breathing animal to an air breather just before this final molt. almost ready to fly. And so the dragonfly passes through distinct phases. Over 90% of its life has been underwater as a nymph. Now comes the dispersal stage. As soon as it is ready, it will seek out a territory, and after that will come mating and reproduction. But not yet. For a few days, while the body hardens and the dragonfly gains strength, it will stay away from water, where it might not survive territorial battles with older adults. But the dispersal stage is almost as important as reproduction. Because with all species, new areas must be colonized to prevent overcrowding. Among the more slender and graceful damselflies, there are some exquisite combinations of color and design. Besides being smaller and less aggressive, damselflies are easily identified by their wings which are folded along the body when at rest. 
Perhaps these are the wings that Tennyson described as clear plates of sapphire mail. reproductive period over the water has begun, with the male actively patrolling for females. Depending on which of the thousands of species they belong to, their lives are measured now in weeks. At every stage in their lives, they have had one essential requirement, unspoiled, shallow marshes and swamps, where the waters are clean and other insects are abundant. But such places are becoming harder for them to find, as the world's marshes are systematically drained for agriculture, housing, and commercial interests. If dragonflies could bring to us one message from their long experience on this planet, it might be a request for us to cherish and respect the wild, wet places they have known for so long.